All right, guys. Well, we're going to move on right now, and Matt's going to run the numbers. But, guys, are you ready to fill my eyes with that <laughs> double vision? Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Matt, run those numbers, please. All right. So here we go. Foreigner covering for the first time. This is double vision. Comes in at number 719 in the 1970s on Best Ever Albums. It comes in at number 81 in the year 1978. Number 4,052 of all time. It is their third highest rated album on Best Ever Albums. And it is not on Rolling Stone's top 500 list. Gotcha. Hmm. All right. Well, I I am, like with Foreigner, I am like Matt on this, in that I am familiar with Foreigner as a greatest hits band, as opposed to an albums band. In fact, hmm. they're one of those bands that it's, it's kind of almost inconceivable to me that they actually released albums because they just seem like a band that just released the greatest hits, you know, and yep. just that's kind of what they were. And so I am familiar with lots of foreigner songs from their greatest hits. I mean, obviously there's hot blooded and double vision on this, but you can, there's a thousand, right? Jukebox hero, urgent, uh, you know, uh, cold as ice. And then of course there's all the like ballads from the, the, oh, yeah. the eighties. Like I want to know what love is and stuff like that. So if you take foreigner and the totality of the greatest hits, foreigners, a great time. I think what I came to realize, at least on this album, is <laughs> once you get past the hits, which are objectively awesome, there ain't a lot left underneath it. And so that's kind of like my take. This album can be summed up this way. This album has Hot Blooded to start, and then Double Vision comes in like a welcome friend in the middle of this album, and surrounded by it is murky, very run-of-the-mill, like, 70s AOR that sounds like the 70s mm. like definitely like um and that I think at, at the the most is the best I can describe it's the lyrics are fairly benign it's kind of like you know we've done a couple bands like this like Boston right who also had kind of lyrics that weren't exactly heavyweight of course the difference was that the guitars and the production of Boston like pushed it up like another level of arena rock uh, you saw a little bit of that same um, that same level of catchiness and production on, especially Double Vision. I think, which is an objectively really good song. I love it. It's like one of those great songs that like you can just you know play in a car and sing along with, mm -hmm. and you know, which my CTS super fan Steve and I have done many a time on the way back at different stuff. It's a Guilty pleasure for sure for both of us. But yeah, outside of that though, it was like boilerplate love songs. There's a lot of like basic rhyming in the, like a lot of basic rhyming yeah. in the lyrics. The guitar <laughs> the lyrics work, are not good. <laughs> the guitar work seems designed to like play for an exact amount of time and then get out of there. You know, there's not exactly a lot of experimentation, I would say. It's very conventional in the rock structure. So I, I, I really can't recommend this one. Um, I love, I think Foreigner more so than any band we've covered so far, or maybe any band that probably in the top 10 of bands I know is, should just be a, a greatest hits band because with, you know, with the totality of those greatest hits, you've got a good listen, but I think it's strikes me. It's, and they have other outs, so I don't want to say it universally, but it strikes me if this is reflective of their other albums that it might be one of these things where every album has a couple hits, you know, and then you mm -hmm. cobble the hits together and then the rest of the albums go into filler territory. So, well, that's what do you guys think? For this type of band to keep playing <laughs> probably till today, I'm sure. T till today, yeah. <laughs> I mean, for sure. Yeah, I, um, I did not like this album uh, <laughs> much at all. Um, and I, you want to say benign lyrics? So this is where I come in with lyrics. These lyrics are terrible. Um, it's just you like... You have to be bad if Matt notices. Exactly. And that's, that's one of my first takes is that like if you're... If I if I can pick out your lyrics and go, well, that lyric's not very good, and then the one after it's even worse, and it just keeps and each song is like just like that, very easy rhyming, like you know, it's just it's like oh, like that makes it even worse. Um, and this, like you said, John, yes, that was present in Boston, but Boston had the mu music to back it up. This does mm -hmm. not. Um, I found this very. I hesitate to say lazy, but it, it's it, the there's no hooks here. Like there's no like you would think that for a big rock. Oh, that double vision has a hook. In fairness, it's, it's it's, okay. There, yeah. Okay, well, yes. Those those two probably there's yes. some hooks there. Um, but I agree and, outside of that. Yes. Yeah. But a lot of these other songs, 
it's just like the chorus gets there and it's just like it, it it's almost like all right well maybe you're building to something and then it just goes flat and it's just like that's your chorus like really um you know so uh so i really you know was turned off by that um I, I did. I will say that I found the second half more interesting than the first half. I really disliked the first half. And I, I know you. I agree I, entirely, Matt. I agree okay. Entirely. Yep. And I know John, you like Hot Blooded. I don't like Hot Blooded. It's one of those songs that I feel is overplayed. I don't. I doesn't really do much for me. I. I guess I get why people like it, but again, there's plenty mm-hmm. of other seventies rock that is going to be way. It's way more appealing and way more um, interesting than that song. It just. It doesn't do anything for me. Um, Double Vision is probably the song in here that i would say that i like the most um but i think that the other songs like the was it tremontaine or whatever it's like this yeah. uh, this uh instrumental part i actually kind of thought that was i'm like well yeah they're not singing so i probably like that better you know but it kind of had some interesting sounds it sounded a, some parts of it actually sounded like some stuff that was going on in tommy uh by the who mm. um it's kind of a synth heavy a little bit of a deeper a darker sound which i thought okay this is more interesting right they're it just trying reminded me different. of phantom of the opera <laughs> <laughs> okay, I could see that too. Actually, I didn't think of that, but yeah, I could see that. But I, it's almost like at that point, that's the seventh track on here, and yeah. by that point, I was just like, okay, you're giving me something a little different here. So mm-hmm. I, it's like a little bit of a breath of fresh air. So, uh, but yeah, very uninspiring. Very, you know, kind the, the stuff that I liked was still just very okay, right? You know, that's that's serviceable. You know, yeah. and that's if that's the best adjective that I can give you then I can't recommend this record. So no, not a fan of Foreigner. It falls right in that lane lane of like generic 70s rock that just, it, it's it's amazing to me that that a band like this can be so popular when yes. there's just, when, when you can have a band, like Boston makes sense. Boston, big, anthemic, catchy, great guitarist. This has none of that for me. Um, I am thumbs down on Foreigner, at least this record. So yes speaking of which this album peaked at number three on the billboard charts and earned platinum after a week yeah like, <laughs> it's been like it's, yeah it just blows my mind i mean how many of those people like probably not many of them how many, how many of those people were like upset that they bought the record you know maybe you well really, if you like, bought the album for something. double vision it yeah. makes sense because double vision is by far the best song on this album by yeah. Yeah. a factor of 10 for me the lead single was hot-blooded followed by double vision and the third single is Blue Monday, Blue Day, which I actually kind of like that guitar riff on that one. I, I'm with you guys. I thought... Oh, I Blue didn't Morning, know... Blue Day, right? Yes, Blue, yeah. yes, blue Morning, Blue Day. Sorry. No and um, yes, I'm firmly ambivalent about this album. It is not good, but it's like, as Matt said, serviceable is like the, the perfect word for this album. Um, is it the missionary album? Of, <laughs> missionary position of album shots? Is not that what even. We say? Yeah. <laughs> It's like the hand job of albums. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the uh, I also didn't know, you know, I did the little uh, quick bio there, British American rock band. I did not know that they were British in part. Uh, the lead singer um, was British and also affects a uh, f- fellow ex King Crimson member. Ian McDonald is in this band. So that ties to that that prog sound maybe a little bit yeah i found this album completely forgettable other than the songs and i'm not even really that high on the singles i think i like double vision and and blue morning blue day the best i i have never been big on hot blooded even though you i feel like everyone knows that song (laughs) just because it's yeah it's one of those bands too that is on classic rock radio and i group with boston and journey in my head like all those types of big arena rock bands even though it seems like now that we've kind of gone through this journey boston and and journey are clearly way better and more interesting in my mind than than this band so yeah th- this is really kind of mid-level arena rock if, if we're gonna if we're gonna rank rank bands that are similar i this is their second album also i feel that's important to note and i found the first half of the album better and then by the time i got to the second half i was like okay i'm done with this band there's there's not really anything here and they weren't even on you know even though they were kind of doing some different stuff on the second half there was nothing there that was keeping my interest or or there was no depth 
to this band that I was that I was hoping for that some of the other bands that we've listened to. I definitely well, heard a prog sound and there's a lot of synth and keyboards thrown in. Um, they had some harmonizing that was good. But oh, Love Has Taken Its Toll, uh, I did not like the saxophone on that. <laughs> <laughs> that was definitely, that was the weakest song on the album. And yeah. by a lot. That yeah. might be the worst song we listened to this entire week, I think. I'm pretty confident that, saying that. Also, yeah. the Lonely Children song is just awful. The lyrics on that are just <laughs> really bad. It's an odd, <laughs> after a bunch of songs about, like, you know, swaggering around, you know what I mean, and trying to, you know, get women, to have a weird, very on-the-nose song about children suffering and how we should care about it is an odd lyrical aside, I will admit to. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. Yeah, I also like thing. how the I like how like was it one of the lyrics where he just like walks up behind the woman and just grabs her by the hips or something like that and I'm like like quasi like you know sexually assaulting it's the 70s, her. 70s man, that's yeah. just how things were. Well, we're going to talk about an album that has a lot of that imagery yeah. on it later. This, but yeah. this is almost like if an AI program created an arena rock band. This is what mm. would happen. It's almost like nonsensical in a well, little bit, but also kind of makes sense. This is how I feel about Foreigner. Well, and why this record, John? Because this is the, was this on the thousand and one out? Yeah, it's I think the third it was highest rated album. Yeah, I think it was just because. Um, you of know, the hits of the hits. Well, 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 here's the thing. Here's the fascinating thing. So ready for this. Remember, I talked about what I think Foreigner's game plan is. So their first album, Foreigner, has cold as ice and feels like the first time. Right. Two songs you probably know. Yes. Right. Yeah, yeah. OK. So Double Vision yeah. has Double Vision and uh, Hot Blooded. Right. Then their uh, third album, Head Games, has Head Games, which is a sol- single off of that that I don't know if you guys are familiar with. I don't know if I know that. I might know if I heard it. Games, it's tearing me apart. Head oh, games, yeah. yeah so Sounds I don't dirt. like that either. I don't <laughs> yeah. like it. See, I yeah. don't even like their singles really. And but uh, dirt, go ahead. And Dirty White Boys on that one as well. Uh, <laughs> four has Waiting for a Girl Like You, which you know the ballot, right? I've been waiting. There oh, you go. God, yeah. And I, has has urgent. So which is yeah. an, <laughs> so urgent. So you know that one. They really are just kind of a singles and band. Ju- jukebox Hero is on that one. And then their fifth album called Agent Provocateur has I Want to Know What Love Is. So yeah. they really did space out yeah. like all of their big hits across all the albums. And you figure all of those were like capital H hits in terms of sales. And all so their you can albums see how were they platinum. <laughs> well, because I mean, because uh, people I'm sure bought it because they're like, ooh, yeah. I want to know what love is. I'm buying the album for that. Oh, OK. Jukebox Hero. I'm going to buy it for that, you know urge you know there's like enough singles right where you could totally understand how someone you know because how many of us have bought an album you know back in the album buying days you know we were in that era the cd where we bought it because we liked the song and then you get it and you're like oh i like this more you get it and you're like oh shit like but but that's but that's what i'm saying the oh shit moment happened plenty of times that it also made me go okay i'm not buying an album by from this band again you know i'm not gonna i'm not gonna fall for that but i don't know well there were a lot of people going back to the foreigner well so well because you figure they had the people that wanted the ar sound right but then they were smart enough to do some ballads right so they probably had yeah. some people buy it who were ballad people, you know. The yeah, ladies, boy. the ladies in particular, is my so, guess, probably like the ballads. Foreigner is go. not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I would like that's to add. good. And, <laughs> and my sister, my sister has that's been. That's what asking, I got right. <laughs> my sister has been asking when I'm going to reference CTS superfan Chelsea, who's been listening recently, guys. So that's oh, my wow. sister. Oh, and she, she, I don't know if she'll be embarrassed by this being the first time she mentioned it, but as a kid, I can remember mm-hmm. my first song favorite song ever at the age of five being I want to know what love is by Ario Speedwagon <laughs> and my sister's first favorite song uh uh or excuse me no my sister's was I want to know what love is by Foreigner and mine was I can't fight this feeling anymore by Ario uh, Speedwagon wow, so I'm sorry I mixed really that up right ballads. there so we were yeah the five <laughs> the five-year-old version of both of us you know what I mean was all about the AOR now I will admit that I grew out of uh, that, but I did share on our buddy Ben and Scoop's podcast, uh, Sideshow Bob's po- podcast, mm-hmm. that the first ever album that I was gifted was Wheels Are Turning by Ario Speedwagon, which is the end of Arena Rock, like 1984. <laughs> so it's, uh, so I'm not going to say I have a soft spot for that, but you know, maybe there are other. 
there were other five to eight year olds. Now is super era. fan is super fan Chelsea still very mm-hmm. much ensconced in uh, AOR for no. you know <laughs> no, we okay. we She's both grown grew out of it okay. very quickly yes yeah. but it was both of ours so shout out to my sister who's been asking yeah. for her name I'll try to bring you up at another time Chelsea outside of uh, a foreigner review right now since we <laughs> what are what are some of over. her favorite uh, albums uh, we well can... we'll save that for another time <laughs> okay. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna you know give all the praise okay. right now well, maybe we can make the cold good. listens like we could have listeners like that was a good idea to have super fan Jeff like give us a, a recommendation so well maybe, once again uh... he did not give the recommendation I just was looking for things to add oh like, Jeff well, maybe we could do that anyway sometime. like certain super fans that have, have been people... with us oh, from yeah. day one to, to like give us a record give us a recommendation maybe we'll uh maybe down since Right. Day one. What if, we, yep. what if we hate the album? <laughs> well, if we could. Wait, well, they won't be the first time that's happened. Yeah, then we right? can. So then we can shit over all over them in a segment. So it'll be equally as fun in that. So, yeah. That's right. So if you're going to give us a recommendation, you better make it good. There you go. Well, all right. So foreigner, unfortunately, you get three thumbs down from the crew. Mm-hmm. So we broke our streak right there. 